Welcome to the first episode of Observable Explorations. We're not going to get to observables this time. We're going to start with a simple data flow and play around with a few familiar techniques. It's like we're starting in your ordinary world before we bring you to the next world. We'll use at published and combine and introduce observable next time. So as I mentioned, as a warm up, let's start with our ordinary world. Here's our main view in SwiftUI. And as you're probably aware by now, I tend to separate the struct from the part that conforms to view. And so our struct will contain a single int called count. And for our presentation inside Bonnie, we'll use a V stack. And on top, we'll have a text that displays the count. And on the bottom, we'll have a button labeled next. I'd like the button action to increase count by one, but of course, this doesn't compile. When you're brand new to SwiftUI, you think it's because count is a let. And so you change it to a var. But main view is a struct, and the action of a button can't be a mutating method. And that's why the at state property wrapper is so important in SwiftUI. It allows us to store count somewhere else. And so when we increment count, we're not making a change to main view, we're making a change to this count that is stored off site. We run the app, we tap the button several times, and we see these results. Now let's move the model data outside of the view. We create a model object to hold count. And for kicks, let's start by making it a struct. Here's my model. It has count as its only property. Count is a let. We're taking a functional approach, and that means increased count will return an instance of model in which the count has been increased. So we've got our view and we've got our model. Let's insert a controller in between. Our controller is a class. We need something that can change. And so we start with an instance of model where the count starts at zero. Cautiously, we'll make model private so that our view can't reach inside and directly manipulate it. And so we need something that reflects the values of the model. In this case, we return the model's count as a string, and we present this method that allows us to increase the count. It replaces the model with a new model where the count has been increased. So we have all our pieces. Let's connect the main view to the controller. So now instead of storing the count locally, we have our controller as our state property. When the user taps the next button, we call the controller's increase count method, and we reflect the value using controller.currentValue. We run the app, we tap the button, we see no changes to the value. The value is changing, the controller is just not communicating the changes back to the main view. One solution is for us to use at published. And so in the controller, let's make the model at published. And I find this really interesting because model is private. If we make controller an observable object and import combine to do so, then what at published does is it says to observable object, tell anyone observing you that you're about to change. The observing object doesn't know what's changed. It just knows something in controller has changed. In order to receive these notifications of change, main view has to make one very small alteration. Instead of state, I need state object. And now when we run it, we see the changes just as we did when we were storing the count locally. As I mentioned, we're using a functional approach with value types at each end and a GUI reference type in the middle. But if you read the tea leaves and you look at what Apple's doing, You'll see that SwiftUI encourages us to say goodbye to Krusty in those lessons of using this protocol-oriented programming. Even though SwiftUI itself embraces POP, if the identity of something is important, then instead of making it a struct and modifying it by creating new instances of the struct and having to update the identity to point at the same thing, we just use a reference type. And so what happens if we make model a class? If model's a class, I'll create an initial value for my count, and my method no longer returns a model, so we change the name from increased count to increase count, as is the tradition, and just modify count directly. So now that model's a class, let's let it announce its own changes. Let's make count be published. Notice model is not conforming to observable object, but I'm using at published. This, of course, requires that I import combine. So what changes in the controller? Here's my current state of the controller. My first change is that I can change the model to just be a private let. My second change is I'm not replacing model with a new instance of model. I'm just saying model.increase count. Model itself never changes. 
That's why model is no longer published or a var. If I run it, we see that we're back to the case where the UI doesn't update. How do we communicate the changes in model all the way back to main view? This is a really nice feature in Combine, which allows us to easily republish. So let's introduce current value, which is a string, and make it at published and place that in controller. And now when I initialize controller, I somehow want to connect models count publisher transform it to a publisher of strings and then place that value in current value and let that be at publish so that it communicates on to the main view. So I don't ask model for its count. Its count is an int. I ask it for its dollar sign count, which is a publisher of ints that never fails. I use map to transform this using the description key path and that transforms this model dot dollar sign count dot map to a publisher of strings that never fails. But that's what current value is. It's a publisher of strings that never fails. And so we use assign to to store that away in current value. So as a new int is published by the model, I transform it into a string and republish it using current value. And now we see the updates as before. So this is the first episode of a series about observable, but observable requires iOS 17. And so what I've shown you is still a great solution if you have to support anything prior to iOS 17. But of course you should come back next time to see the iOS 17 alternative, and that is observable.